Hey. So, I want to take a minute and actually just talk about prepping 3D printed axle housings. Uh, we do an awful lot of these now. Uh, as you know, all of our factory built trucks come with these delicious axle housings on them. Uh, these We've been using these since 2014, so fear, fear not. Uh, they're crazy strong. They work good. They look great. And, uh, you know, it's pretty legit right there. This is a Delta rear axle housing. So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, axle prep because, of course, these are laser-centered nylon. Uh, they're actually made out of a dust bed of nylon particles, and then they're all lasered into this particular shape. Then they knock off the dust, and you end up with this. Uh, it comes in white out of the printer. It's all white nylon. And then they get a bit of a polish done on them and dyed black. So... Let's talk about actually prepping these before assembly. So first of all, we're going to talk about the rear housing. Um, I want you to check this through here. You can see through this axle housing. See that? You can see right in the end. You can see right through it. And that's super important because what can happen with these is that while these are being laser printed, uh, sometimes there can be some dust left in the hole here from the printing process. It doesn't get knocked out after the print. And then when they go to put them in the dye, of course, they're dyeing them into a wet bath. And then that not, that dust that's actually caught in there gets wet and then it kind of hardens into a bit of a goo. And so you really need to clean that out. And so I'm recommending you take a drill and put the drill in the end of the housing on your drill and actually twist out all of that dust that's in the axle housing and you can tell right away if there's dust in there because it's either round if it's clean or it's kind of a D hole if it's not clean it'll kind of look like a D hole inside or it'll actually be plugged solid and you won't be able to see through it at all so look into that first get that cleared out so you can tell that it's got no no restrictions inside you know clear all the way through the next thing you're going to do is uh, also go through all of these holes here. There's, there's mount holes on here for leaf springs. On the front, you'll see that you've got uh, holes here for the knuckles and bearings in the end, stuff like that. All of these holes have to be free of dust. So, And I want you to size them in the appropriate sizes. So this is basically what you're going to do. You need a drill that's 2.5 millimeters in size. 2.5 millimeters or you can use a 332nd um, inch size drill and they're basically the same diameter so that'll work fine either way and what you're going to do is you're going to drill out all of these holes so that when you put a screw in there the thread in the thread will bite properly in all these holes okay so there's those there's the spring perches you need a 2.5 millimeter hole in here as well. All of these link mounts are all for a 2.5 millimeter thread hole. So that's the hole that you're going to drill, 2.5. And the reason for that is because at the M3 screws or the thread, the actual thread that has the that's on the end of the screw, it is a 0.5 pitch. Okay, so 0.5 millimeter pitch minus 3 millimeters is 2.5. That's how you find out the drill size. It's very simple on metric. So you're going to drill out all of these holes to uh, clear out the dust in the middle right here and make sure that all of the spring perch holes or any of these holes here that have link mounts on them all of these holes are all going to be cleaned out with a 2.5 millimeter drill and uh, the knuckle holes on the front end of a GCM axle these these knuckle pin holes also have an M3 set screw in them, so you're going to use the same drill, the 2.5 drill, and run that through. Okay, You can just run that straight down like that, all the way in. This is also 2.5. All of these holes are 
2.5 for the link mounts. Okay, and you're just going to put it in there on your drill and clean out all the dust out of the holes and make sure the holes are nice and round, okay? It doesn't take a lot of work to actually do that, but that's a really important step. And one of the reasons why is because nylon dust is extremely dense. So it makes a great axle housing, but it doesn't compress very well. So for instance, in this hole right here, this hole right here is actually the hole bottoms out inside the diff part, right inside there. So if you didn't clean the nylon out of that hole and then you try to jam a screw in it, it's actually just going to stop wherever the dust is and then it's going to strip out the rest of the threads. You won't get a proper bite on the thread in that hole if it's got dust in it, so you must clean those out. That's a quick tip for these. Now the covers on a GCM axle, the cover bolts are M2.5, so you actually need a smaller drill than that. You need a 2 millimeter drill to put in there, which is also 564 inch size. So 2 millimeters for the covers, or 564. And then the cover screws will have the proper holes already in it. And the same story there, you want to get that, get all the dust cleared out of the cover holes so that when you put the screw in there there's nothing inhibiting the screw from going all the way down in the hole very important and then when you're all done with that of course you can assemble all your axles like this and you'll have something that looks absolutely wonderful now let's go look at the gear set on the gear train side we're using the Viterra gear set in all the GCM axles there's the part number right there and what you get out of that bag is this one piece locker and you get this pinion gear right here and then of course uh, because we supply all the hardware we're giving you the screw that goes with that and then this uh, diff input adapter so that the pinion gear will fit on that square right there just like that bearings in between that the screw goes in the end that captures it all perfectly inside the housing very very simple install and uh, we're just going to drop that right into here so you can have a look so the 10 by 15 bearing goes in the end here like that if it's tight sometimes the nylon has a little bit of dust in it or the uh, sometimes the uh, process for the cleaning doesn't get them quite as clean in the bearing hole and so sometimes you actually have to push the bearing in there pretty hard but uh, that's important for you to push that in there and then the inside bearing is a 6x12, let me grab one of those out of the bin here. The 6x12 goes on the inside here, just like that. So we've got inner and outer, there we go. And then of course this here just drops right in, oh I knocked the bearing out. Slide that over top of the input shaft and the way these are made is that um, once you've got the screw on the gear so there we go there's that inside waiting for the gear drop the gear in there like that and then we'll put the screw in put some thread locker on that screw right there and then can get that put in. Now, a couple of tricks for this. Basically, when you put the screw in, uh, you don't want to crank the screw in like super tight. That's a bad idea. So, all you really have to do is hold the shaft and then tighten down the screw with your wrench until it's a good finger tight, but nothing more. Don't crank it. Okay, and now we have a perfectly smooth rolling assembly. So, if you over tighten that screw right there, what happens is this bearing on the outside starts to get crunchy. And then you get drag on the bearing. So, this thing should be like super free. Like, I mean, no resistance in there at all. It should be really, really free to turn. If it's too tight, loosen that screw right there on the pinion gear. That's the trick. Loosen that up. Now, two bearings that go on here. 
they are 8 by 14 size I will grab those and they just simply slip over top of the locker assembly on each side like this uh, we always use white lithium grease in all of these assemblies you can use your favorite grease but I highly recommend white lithium the structure of the lithium grease actually adheres to the metal so it's like permanent lubed and it's a very thin grease so you don't get a lot of motor drag to me that's important I want a really light light rolling resistance on the setup okay so you're gonna do this and then should be very easily very very easily turn like I mean really easily turn okay there's no cover on it yet but you get the idea and then we're gonna drop the cover on like this and then we're gonna stick in the four uh, screws that go in here and and then we're gonna check the gear mesh so the four screws are in I want to show you kind of where this one stops so basically the cover is touching if you want a watertight seal here you can put grease on the cover to seal the joint and then basically all I'm doing is screwing this down until it touches the surface there so that's about it it's like just contact tight. The screws are not squishing into the plastic or anything, they're just like sitting there, it's like contact tight. Now what you want to do is before you go and put the axle set in, there's still see-through there and through the locker you can tell. Before you go and put the axle set in, front or rear, check to see if it's dragging. And I'll show you a tip on that in a second. So right now you want a really smooth, smooth axle. You want that's what you want. No dragging at all. Okay, zero drag. But sometimes when you assemble these 3D printed parts, sometimes the gear set will have a very slightly different bearing alignment in it. Very slightly. Tiny bit. And if that's the case, you can actually fix it now that the cover's on. Because the cover holds the bearings onto the housing. So what you do, you take a drill bit like this with the flat end of the drill bit and you stick it into the shaft into the shaft hole and you put it in so it's opposite the gear set so the ring gears over here this is the flat side of the locker okay this is the ring set on this side put a drill bit on that side and then you're gonna tap the drill bit end that way so what you're doing is actually pushing the ring gear and the locker away from the pinion and that will seat the bearing on the outside of the ring okay so you just have to tap this in with a hammer like that and uh, I usually do this in one step just by smashing it onto my bench I just kinda you know crash it on my bench but I don't feel like making that amount of noise right now so you bang that with the drill and then that will seat the bearing on the outside of the ring gear side and it's pretty easy to tell the ring gear side because it's it's there's a bump on the cover there's a bump on the housing you know what I mean so that's that's the ring gear side and you want to push the locker into the ring gear side to seat this bearing beside the ring gear and when you do that you'll get zero drag you should have zero drag in the axle housing like that just none zero it's so great and now you can put the rest of the axle set in put the end bearings in now you can actually finish the housing because you've got all the internals set properly that's a major trick right there so we're all finished up with these got the wheel hexes on here got the uh, all the bits so we're pretty much ready for an axle install these are good to go uh, that's Delta this is a front delta axle here, right side, front delta axle, left side, and then uh, while you were out, I also built a bunch of these, which is a 172 Rover radius arm axle, built a bunch of these. This is a uh, Bauhaus RC product, and uh, the only difference in that is that these holes these screws here on the inside of the cover they're actually M3's um, and all of the GCM axles 
use a smaller M2.5 so the drill size is different for these two but that's the only difference in the really in the assembly the same knuckles now what I love to do on these is uh, while I can still get at the knuckle really easily I like to uh, just put a little shot of just a tiny little shot of lubrication in there on the CVD so where the CVD slot is right there on the inside I usually use this stuff here fluid film and uh, I'm just gonna squirt a tiny little shot in there tiny shot like just the smallest little drip just like that and this stuff is kind of waxy it manages to get into the uh, the axle shaft but then it's then it becomes waxy and uh, a little thicker so it works its way right into the joint like right you can even feel it right away that little tiny bit of lubrication just makes a huge difference in there so uh, so smooth now like so smooth the whole dry feeling is totally gone and to me that's just a really good way of prepping the axle for you know its initial use and uh, after that you know you're gonna have to keep them up and do a little bit of lubrication in there when they get wet or anything like that but uh, that's pretty much assembling some nylon axles so I hope that helped you out with some tips uh, Hopefully, if you uh, have any questions about assembling any kind of uh, 3D printed nylon axle housings, you can write them in the comments, and we'll be happy to answer your questions and try to get you up on the trail and doing well and ready to go. We'll see you out there.